Hello, in this video we're going to answer this interesting question. Can legs of a right triangle be perfect squares? In other words, can you have a right triangle that the two legs are perfect squares of integers and the hypotenuse is also an integer? Okay, so before I can get to that, I need a little bit of preparation and then we'll get to that. And um, I would like to also tell you that the concepts that we're going to discuss in this video are very elementary number theory. So nothing really advanced is going to be required to understand this video. The first thing is that if you have three integers, A, B, C, that are the sides of a right triangle, we say A, B, C is a primitive Pythagorean triple if the three sides are relatively prime. In other words, you have right triangles with 3, 4, 5. You can also rescale them to get 6, 8, 10. So we're only going to focus on the triangles that have side net that are relatively prime. And the second theorem is something that I have discussed in a separate video. So if you are interested in, in understanding the theorem and the definition better, I have another video on this topic that I'm going to link it to the upper right corner and you can check that out. It tells us, the, the, the theorem tells us that any primitive Pythagorean triple is of the form 2mn m squared minus n squared and m squared plus n squared where m and n are two relatively prime positive integers and exactly one of them is even and the other one is odd. Now, in fact, what we want to show is that there is no right triangle with this uh, specification. The idea that we're going to use is what we call proof by infinite descent. So what is proof by infinite descent? Proof by infinite descent goes like this. You assume that there is such a triangle we're going to look at the smallest one and then we're going to find something smaller than that, which means that is a contradiction. So let's get started. So suppose A, B, C are positive integers with, so A squared is one leg. So if I write down the Pythagorean identity, I get A to the fourth. B squared is the other leg. So we get B to the fourth is equal to hypotenuse squared. So we get that. So suppose there are positive integers A, B, C that satisfy this. And let's assume that C is the smallest. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually show that there is something even smaller than C. First thing is that the um, A, B, A, B, and C must be in fact relatively prime because if there is something that divides them all then we can basically divide off by that so that's the first claim so first note that if you have something that divides a and b then p to the fourth would divide a to the fourth plus b to the fourth which is c squared and that means p squared divides c, which means I can say a over p to the fourth plus b over p to the fourth is equal to c over p squared squared. So this contradicts the minimality of c unless p is just 1. So therefore, what we just showed is that A and B are relatively prime. So this means A squared, B squared, and C are going to give us a primitive Pythagorean triple. Thus, A squared, B squared, C is a primitive Pythagorean triple. Okay, so how does that help? Now we are going to use the theorem. The theorem told us that any primitive Pythagorean triple is going to be of the form 2mn m squared minus n squared and m squared plus n squared. So by the theorem, what we're going to get is a squared is going to be m squared minus n squared, b squared would be 2mn or vice versa, but it doesn't really matter because of the symmetry. And C would be m squared plus n squared for some 
integers m greater than n greater than 0 with GCD of m and n is 1 and exactly one of them is odd, the other one is even. In other words, 2 does not divide their sum. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, look at the equality that we have here, and that gives us another Pythagorean triple. So we have n squared plus a squared equals m squared, and we also know m and n are relatively prime. So this tells us m, n, and a, or rather, um, this tells us n, a, and m is a primitive Pythagorean triple. Okay, so one thing that it tells us is that m must be odd because if you look at uh, Pythagorean triples that are primitive, the hypotenuse is always odd because it is um, the, of the form m squared minus n squared and m and n exactly one of them is odd one of them is even so this tells us m is odd which means n is even so that tells us by the same theorem n must be two times some uv a must be u squared minus v squared and m must be u squared plus v squared for some integers u greater than v greater than 0 with again the same specifications gcd of u and v is 1 and 2 doesn't divide u plus v so we have these properties now i'm going to use the fact that 2mn is equal to b squared so m is what we know is that m is odd and we also know that gcd of m and n is 1. So that tells us GCD of m and 2n is 1. But what we know is that 2n times m is b squared, which is a perfect square. Okay, so if you have product of two numbers that are relatively prime, 2n and m are relatively prime, and their product is a perfect square. So that means 2n must be a perfect square so let me write it down as maybe like x squared and m is a perfect square as well for some x and y positive integers but let's look at 2n if you look at 2n 2n is going to be 4uv this is a perfect square u and v are both relatively prime gcd of u and v is one because of that u and v are both perfect squares so let's see what we get so that tells us u is equal to some t squared v is equal to some s squared for some positive integers t and s now let's take these and plug it back into the equality that we had what we had was m equals u squared plus v squared we figured that m must be a perfect square we wrote it down as y squared m equals u squared plus v squared that tells us y squared is equal to u is t squared, so that would be t to the fourth, and v is s squared, so that would be s to the fourth. This is the same equation that we started with. t squared, s squared are legs of a right triangle. If you look at y, y is less than or equal to y squared. y squared is m. m is less than, if I look at c, c was m squared plus n squared. I have it here m is less than m squared plus n squared which is in fact c so that tells us we found another right triangle 
with side length t squared, s squared, and y. But this right triangle has a smaller hypotenuse, and this is a contradiction. And this contradiction means we cannot have such a right triangle to begin with. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video and you are interested in these kinds of problems, feel free to check out my other videos on the channel. And I will see you in another video.